Hello, everyone. Tech Good Reads give you good thing to read to listen. Today, I will talk about AWS Identity and Access Management, is abbreviated as IAM. If your organization is big enough to have different roles for team members, IAM ensures the proper people to have the appropriate access to technology resources. IAM is a very important security method in the AWS, but there's also security features that are outside of IAM. Here's some examples. EC2 uses key pair or username password. For the database, like RDS, Redshift, they use the username and password. Others, like Workdocs, Workspaces, they use the username and password. There are different features for the security in the AWS. When we create IAM, first we use the root user. It's the login with the email, and the billing information can only be attained from the IAM root user. Root user has the extreme power and cannot be limited. As the best practice suggested by the AWS, use IAM user for day-to-day -day interactions with AWS. Don't use root users. For the IAM, it has several terminologies. It's very important. First is the principle, and then is the request. It uses the authentication. We can see that the graph the principal send the request with the authentication, and then add, uh, it needs the authorization. For the authorization, it needs uh, actions or operations, and it uh, access the AWS resources. So all those terminologies, let's explain them in details. IAM principles is a uh, Principle is an entity that can take an action on an AWS resource. There are several things belong to the IAM principle. One is IAM user, also federated user, IAM role, and also identity providers. For the IAM, permission is very important and we use policy to define the permissions. For the policy, it mainly has two types. One is resource-based. Such a policy attached to an AWS resource. The other is identity-based. It's attached to an IAM principle. To define a policy, we need to know the allow and the deny model of the AWS. By default, they are denied. There's no permissions. So if there's any explicit deny condition, then you are denied. Otherwise, it will check the policy if there's any explicit allow condition, then it's allow the resource access. Otherwise, by default, it's denied. We also need to understand IAM identity concept. It's the IAM resource objects that are used to identify and group. So there are three things belongs to the IAM identity. One is user, the other is group, and the last one is I am role. Understand identity, we can understand the identity-based policy. As we said, user, group, and roles are three things of identity. But they have some characteristics for such a policy. This policy is used to grant the AM principle to access an AM AWS resource. For the IAM role, it authenticates using short-lived credentials. 
for the IAM users, it authenticates using long lived credentials. So we can see that if you want to increase the security, you should use IAM roles over IAM users. Also for the group, IAM group is only just a set of IAM users so that they, it can grant them the same privileges easily. For the IAM based policy, it has three types. The first policy is AWS managed. The second one is customer managed, and the third one is inline. As the best practice, we should always start with the AWS managed policy, and then we can change them into the customer managed so that it have better security. Maybe we can add conditions. Here's a policy example. The policy uses the JSON format. We can see that it first defines the version, and this is the required field, and also has a statement. It uh, tells us about the effect is allow or deny, uh, what actions, which resources to request, and also conditions. This is the very important part, and this will help you to increase your security. It can restrict that certain requests can only access certain resources. Thank you for listening to today's Tech Good Reads. This is Chani. See you next time.